I'm Mark Bloom. I am a science educator. I, my primary teaching role at Dallas Baptist University is teaching non-majors biology. I also teach pre-service teachers how to teach science. So I've kind of in education and in science. Um, funny thing, uh, my background, let's go, funny thing, the, my background is I was raised in a very conservative Christian home. Um, uh, the Church of God from Indiana chapter, if that means anything to you. Um, my parents double dated with Bill and Gloria Gaither. If you know who they are, that means something. Uh, so we went to church twice on Sunday, once on Wednesday. It was definitely the family that Amanda spoke about. That was the people that I engaged with, the people I grew with, um, the people that loved us. And as I began to develop an interest in science, I, I begin to, to sense that that tension that Brianna and Amanda both both spoke about uh, concerns. Uh, I'd be pulled aside by youth pastors saying, "I'll be careful. There, you're going to hear things in these classes that you seem so interested in." And it's so already this sort of wedge was beginning to form. And but my 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 the, the curiosity and my the awe I have of nature that Brianna mentioned it, it just drove me. It pulled me into it further and further. And so I I kept pursuing science as much as I could, and became a, a biology major at funny thing, Dallas Baptist University. Um, the, the reason I say that's funny is I, I was a, I meandered my way through my undergraduate degree. And by the time I went to Dallas Baptist, I already had four years. I was my, my third year being a sophomore, I think. And at that point in time, I, I not started there yet, but I'd gone to church with my family one Sunday morning, which really shows how, how extreme they were. But on this Sunday morning service was about the perils of evolution being taught in school. And the pastor, I'm already a biology major in, in, in undergraduate, I've studied this stuff, I'm accepting of it. And he looks out and says, you cannot be a Christian and have any integrity if you believe in evolution. And it was like, wow, that's a line in the sand. That's a very strict line in the sand. You're saying I don't have integrity. You're saying I no longer have rapport with this group of people who I've grown with for over two decades. And, and the end result is enough of that, I walked away. I said, okay, I'll, I, I won't be a part of that group if that's how you view me. And that family, those family ties were broken. Um, I ended up going to Dallas Baptist University because it was the one place I could finish my degree without taking calculus. Absolutely, the fact that it was a Baptist institution was in the negative pro and con column. It was not actually a good thing, but I went there, it was close to home, I could finish quickly and be done. So fast forward now, all these years later, and now I'm a professor at Dallas Baptist University. I found myself in need of a change. I The school was here, I graduated from there, I stopped by to visit, and next thing you know, they were offering me a job. And my wife actually said, you won't be able to keep your job, you're gonna get fired if you work there. And, and I have come back to religion. I'm, I'm, I have found a way of reconciling my religious beliefs and my scientific understanding. Um, but I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna give this a shot. Uh, early on teaching non-majors, as we approach those touchy subjects. Now see, I know what the touchy subjects are because I was raised in that world. So I know what they've heard and I know what they've experienced. And so one, one year I decided to survey my students about evolution. And I, and I know it's much more nuanced than this, but for a non-majors class, I said, let's assume there's four explanations of the diversity of life on earth. And the first one is young earth creationism, six to 12,000 year old earth, God made everything in his present form. Over here, we've got choice two, and that's gonna be a very, very old earth but everything was created in his present form by a divine creator. Over here, we've got a third choice, which is very old earth, billions of years old, but evolution explains the diversity of life on earth, but not humans. And then we've got choice D, which is very old earth, evolution explains everything. And out of the 83 students I had that semester, 54% of them were young earth creationists. 10,000 year old earth, everything was made in its present form. Only three of my students chose the fourth option that evolution explained everything. Uh, a whopping 22% accepted evolution, but not with humans. So that kind of shows you the, the group of people that I'm working with. So how did I keep my job? Because I have, I've been there for eight years now and I've kept my job. And I think what, what Amanda, what Brianna, and what Rabbi Jeff has already mentioned is there's got to be a respect. There's got to be dialogue. There's got to be, the more they learn about it, 
the more likely they are to accept it. That's what I think Amanda just said, right? So how do I get them to learn about this topic? And what I've done is I've kind of tapped into my uh, uh, cultural intelligence. And it, I know who these people are. I know the kind of things that can be upsetting to them. Um, I've learned even more than what I knew from growing up. I mean, I've had students bring up to me that there was no death before the fall of Adam and Eve. And, and I, of course, I'd already, I guess, had always interpreted that as death being separation from God, sin, no peace, this kind of bit. But no, they mean there was no physical death before the fall of Adam and Eve. And so when I queried them, stifling the laugh, it was kind of a, wanted to come up, but I kept it down dialogue. What do you mean by that? Um, they said, literally, predators ate grass before. So lions ate grass before the fall of Adam and Eve. Nothing died. And when I said, but plants are dying when you eat them and they said well they don't have lungs and they're not respiring they don't have pneuma they were drawing on greek words to try to just so i thought okay this is a, a different group that i'm working with so i've developed I've, I've worked with my cultural intelligence to try to help them be more accepting to learning about a topic and the way i do it is i avoid the trigger words um uh, jonathan Haidt wrote the, the book the righteous mind why good people are divided by politics and religion and it's one of the best books I've read it a long time, it's really great. But in it, he describes the, the inner psyche as sort of an elephant with a human on top. And when the, the human thinks he's driving this elephant around, right? But if you trigger and scare the elephant, the human has no control whatsoever. So if I walked in there and said, folks, today we're gonna learn how you are descended from other primates. Well, I've scared the elephants and the elephants are running, the students aren't learning, the topic is shut down and I'm not, effective in my job anymore. So instead, what I do is I talk about vestigial structures and I talk about how adaptations to environment for different organisms and how they fit in. And isn't this amazing that this works this way? And by the time they finally recognize that I've been teaching them evolution for 10 weeks, and then you see this like shocked look where you, the, the thought bubble is like, oh my God, I'm an evolutionist. And I'm like, yes, you are. And it's okay because so am I. And I'm here and I'm at a Baptist institution and we're vetted and it's a safe place to learn. Um, and so I found that a lot of the times with, with students who are reticent to learn these subjects or apprehensive about it, the first most important thing is, is opening their eyes to the fact that there are religious people who hold to these ideas and they understand them and they're not offended by them and they're not.